Hello. All right, so what's up, guys? Happy Friday. I like to uh, spend my time when I'm not actually working with a client, working on fake clients. So this is my mannequin, Angela. I've had this technique or placement, whatever, in my head for a while, and I wanted to try it out on her. Um, so what I'm doing is basically taking like a normal balayage V section, but then filling in the hollow spots with an alternating color. And uh, I started doing it and I was pretty excited about how it was looking so far. So I figured, let's go live and do it as a team. So I've got two formulas that I'm working with right now. One is a mix of Cleopatra, all by Pulp Riot, Cleopatra, Blush, and Candy. The other is a mix of Aftermath and Area 51. So what I'm doing is taking these diagonal back sections and then just alternating the colors so it goes in a pattern. Hopefully it looks really badass at the end and not just like a big mess. I also couldn't find anywhere good for my uh, mannequin stand to sit, so I have it hooked on my chair. I'm gonna end up with like a load of back problems at the end of this, but it'll be worth it. Hey guys, if you're here, say something so I actually know who's hanging out with Angela and I. I ordered Angela on Amazon and she's been sitting at my house for like weeks now just scaring the shit out of everybody. So I figured it was finally time to bring her in and use her like she was meant to be used. So this is just your traditional V shape. Um, pattern like you would do a balayage, but then I'm taking my other color and just filling in the hollow spot of the V. We're just gonna feather that right on down. I think this may be the first time I've gone live on Instagram. I've done Facebook Lives before, but I'm not really 100% sure how the Instagram Lives work. But it looks like we're doing it fine. Got a little bit of a ghetto setup here. I've got my phone locked into my ring lights tripod. I don't have like a little mobile one. But I think it's working fine. So I'm gonna do the same colors for each little row and then I'll switch and do the opposite when I move up a section. And then I'm going back and just checking the underneath and making sure all of that is saturated and I didn't miss anything. reminds me of like 
watermelon gushers or something. It's definitely giving me like candy vibes. So for this section, we did green as our V shape. So moving up into this section, we'll be doing the pink as the V shape and using the green formula to fill in that hollow spot. And I'm painting this first part just like I would do for like a normal balayage bead. I'm gonna saturate those ends. And make sure that the V is saturated all the way through to the underside. Definitely want to make sure you have a towel handy too when you're doing more than one color like this. Just so you can keep your section super duper clean and don't have any overlapping where you don't want it. Hey Brianna. Hey Cody, how have you been? It's been so long. God, Angela, please stay where I'm putting you, girl. So one of the cool things about Pulp Riot is, I don't know if you just noticed, but I smushed some paint down on my green section. But since that section has already been saturated with the color, the pink is not going to do anything to it. Obviously you don't want to risk it and just smush color all over the place. You still want to try to be clean, but it is not going to be the end of the world if one of your colors touches the other color. Where are you at now, Cody? It's been good. Super busy down here. Be even better if Angela would stay where I put her head. But whatever. So what I'm doing to really get into that hollow spot of the V is I'm starting out by using my brush horizontally. And then once I get the big, the width done, I'm uh, flipping it vertically and just feathering it down. That way we make sure we have saturation all the way through. Okay. So now let's do our green for our V shape right up here. I know Brianna, I'm excited too. I think um, I'm not gonna stay live the whole time she's processing. I feel like that can get a little boring just watching me wait, but I will either Post the after in my stories or on my feed. What do you guys think would be easier for you guys to find it? Oh God, we're losing brushes. I'm seriously the worst about throwing combs and color brushes and even like bowls of color right onto the ground. I have white tile floors in my suite, so it's just like a rainbow on the floor now from everything I've dropped. So 
So again, we're doing this wider part up here with the brush horizontally. And after I kind of spread that down, I'm gonna go in vertically and just feather it right into the V. And then again, check your underneath just to make sure it's all saturated all the way through. Hey, Caroline! So when I was choosing which colors I wanted to try this placement out on, I did go for kind of lighter tones. That way, just in case, because it is a new like placement that I'm trying out, if there are any hollow spots or anything, it'll be a little more forgiving using the lighter tones. If I do anything more pigmented and I miss a piece or something doesn't get saturated fully, it'll be a lot more obvious. So just as kind of a safeguard there. Um, I actually got my mannequin on Amazon and she was only um, like $26, I think. And she came with a little stand and it's all human hair, so we should be fine to blow her out and everything. And she's, I mean, she's definitely blonde. You can see that. She's not like a white blonde. Um, she has like a little bit of yellow, like some gold undertones in there. But for under $30 and two day shipping, I ain't mad at it. But I'll send you the Amazon link if you want when I'm done. It's been forever since I worked with a mannequin, but I wanted to, I do have some models that will let me try some stuff out on them, but because I just really wanted to go like full experimental mode with this. I wanted to do it on uh, a fake person. switch back to using our pink formula for the V and using the green to fill in the hollow spot. When we get to the sides, we're just going to do diagonal backs and just alternate between our colors. downsides about being live is I can't have any music playing in the background that I don't have the rights to. I learned that the hard way from going live on Facebook with music in the background and they completely shut off all my audio on the video. That was quite disheartening. We're definitely gonna have to give Angela a haircut too. Her ends are not looking super nice. And then the sections I'm taking are just about an inch wide. I don't wanna do them too big or I'll lose some of the saturation. 
but I also don't need it too thin either just because this is mannequin hair so it's not very thick as it is. If this was on a real human, I'd probably bump it down to like half an inch or so. Just depending on their hair texture and thickness and all of that good stuff. Do it, do it, do it, do your color. I'm really enjoying being live too, like it's, if I wasn't live, I would seriously be sitting in here by myself just having a conversation with my mannequin. So it's a lot more fun talking to real people. So when I'm like pulling the color down on this middle part, I can actually just kind of pull it all the way down and it just kind of falls right into place where we want it. It doesn't overlap the V section at all. It makes it for a pretty easy application. Angela, get up here, y'all. Okay. So the last section was pink for our V's. We're going to go back into the green V's here. Just feather that down like we've been doing. Applications are always fun. <laughs> so this will be another green V. Right here. Normally I would be standing behind the section that I'm doing, but because I want you guys to actually be able to see, I'm directing this over so I can make sure the V just stays on that exterior portion of the hair. So we still have that really clean V shape in there. About to not really light over there. Oh yeah. It took me forever to figure out what I wanted to name her. She didn't come with a name. I know some of them actually come already named. I was seriously looking up baby names on Google to find something that fit her personality. Let's 
Let's see, now that these sections are getting pretty small, I'm actually just going to start taking them horizontally. So we'll do pink as the V for this section. So that V. I'm going to take one more horizontal section to use as the green V, and then I want to end with the V being the pink on top. So I am going to try to make that match up on the sides. Like I want my top section to have the, um, the pink as the V shape. So it'll look a little more um, uniform. Oh, almost messed it up. How do you guys think I should show you the end result? Should I just post it in a story or do you want to actually come back and find it on my feed later? What do you think? I need to know. I gotta tell you, if I post it on my story, it'll be up a lot faster than when it goes on my feed. You guys are popping in now make sure you say something so I can see who is here with me and Angela okay so this is our last um, section for this back piece so we're going to end it with the V shape being our pink formula and the green filling in that hollow triangle and again, if you guys are just coming on, yes, that's what I was thinking, Brittany. Um, I'm taking two formulas, both Pulp Riot formulas, doing one as a balayage V, just your normal balayage V, but instead of leaving the middle of the V hollow as like a normal flow light, I'm going to fill it in with a different Pulp Riot formula. For this case, for this section, it'll be green. And then I'm actually alternating the two, switching back and forth between which is the V and which is the filler as I move up the head. I've been doing diagonal back sections all the way up. Now we're on the last piece. I'm using the wider part of the brush to get that top part covered. And then as I start bringing it down, I'm gonna turn the brush vertically so we can really get in that little section and make sure we don't miss any pieces. And then just pull it straight down. Checking that underneath to make sure it's all saturated and we didn't miss anything. It looks good. This is 
this is where we are at now. It's got like a lot of dimension to it. Looking pretty cute. All right. <laughs> Look at this face. <laughs> her eyebrows are so intense. I love her so much. <laughs> my, I scared the shit out of my daughter when I first got her. <laughs> it was very mean but also hilarious. All right, now that I'm moving into this uh, side section, I noticed I missed a little spot right here. So I'm just gonna go back with whatever color matches up with it and kind of retouch right at the root. Not that anyone would really ever see that, but it would drive me crazy if I know I just left it there. Okay. Now for this section, we're going to do diagonal backs again. I'm doing diagonal backs because I feel like it looks a little bit softer. If you do diagonal forwards, you see a lot more of the color pop right around the face. This I feel like is just a little more blended. Let's start with our pink as the V again. <laughs> I'm gonna pull it right back around her face and just make sure I get all of that completely saturated. Sorry, girl. Got a song stuck in my head from High School Musical. I don't know where it came from. Haven't seen that movie in years. But it sure as shit stuck in my head today. Can you guys see okay since I had to adjust her a little bit? I want to get one of those mannequin stands that are actually like a tripod so I can just move it wherever and not have to attach her to anything. My original plan was to attach her to my color cart, but it's got like a lip around the edge and it wouldn't, her stand wouldn't open up wide enough to fit around to the cart. So this was the only option we had. Again, I'm going to pull that hair back from the face and just make sure her hairline is completely saturated as well. Cool. Good, good, good. Brittany, I think you missed the formulation part. My pink formula is Cleopatra Blush and Candy. My green formula is Aftermath and Area 51. And it's about equal parts of everything. Oh, Angela, you're going to be so beautiful. I can't wait to see you. So I know I want to end with the um, pink as the V up here. So I'm going to actually go ahead and make sure it's going to line up so I can adjust my sectioning if I need to. So if this is a green V, this will be a pink V. 
This will be a green V. This would be pink and this would be green. So we have to adjust our sectioning just a little. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and take this one a little bit smaller so we can add another section in there and make sure it ends on pink. So if we take a little bit smaller and do this one pink, this one green, this one pink, this one green, then this will end up being pink. So instead of taking them quite so big, I'm gonna drop down the sizes of each um, diagonal back section right through here just to make sure I end on the color that I want to end on. person. Fake Betch of the E-Mall. Welcome. to a green B for this one. We'll do green, pink, green, pink. So I'm just gonna keep checking as I move up into each new section just to make sure I'm taking it um, not too big, but not too small either. So that pink V will line up perfectly when we get to the top. the green brush again once I and I did it once I drop one thing I continue to drop things for the rest of the day which sucks now especially because this is the start of my day I have a real color coming in this afternoon and I'm sure I'll be dropping everything when she gets here Again, you can see here I got some pink on our green section, but the section's already filled with our green formula because I put it up there first. So that pink is actually not going to do anything bad to that section. It's not gonna throw off the tone or anything.
If you guys have questions or anything, of course, you can drop them in the comments or if you end up watching this on replay, you're more than welcome to DM me. But this is just a placement that I thought up in my head while I was like trying to fall asleep one night. So this is completely just a trial just so I can see if this actually looks as cool as I thought it would look or not. here we're going to end with a pink V. That was way too much product right there but we'll make it work. Again, we're making super duper sure that everything around her hairline is completely saturated. So I'm kind of directing the hair away from the face just to make sure that I've got everything covered up there. section for the side and then we have one big section left on the right side of our head to do and it'll be time to process so we do want this to be a pink V section so it will be kind of uniform all the way over throughout the head we're going to end the top of the next section on a pink V section as well going to use our second formula which is our green to fill in this triangle starting horizontally at the root and then turning the brush vertically to feather it down right in to that V check underneath make sure it's all saturated and she is looking good here. In between sections I always check my color and see how we're doing. We have a lot of pink left. We're running a little low on green so I'm going to go ahead and snag a little more of our green formula and we'll get going. Are you kidding me? I've seriously dropped three color brushes on the floor. This is a disaster. And again, our green formula was Aftermath and Area 51, just about equal parts. 
If it was a client, I would not be reusing the same brush, but since it was Angela, I'm gonna grab the floor, the floor brush and go for it. Perfect. So for our previous section, on the other side of the head, we started with our pink V at the bottom. So we're going to do the same thing on this side, just to keep it consistent. And I am directing the sections where I need to, just to make sure there is saturation all throughout and we aren't missing any pieces anywhere. So doing the same thing we did on the back and the other side, we are going to be alternating our color pattern each time we move up a section. So this will be a green V using our other formula, which is our pink, to fill in the triangle in between the V. I'm super obsessed with this pink. I've been stuck on doing Cupid and Candy as my go-to pink formula, but I think this one may take its place. I like that the Clio is giving it a little more of like a peachy kind of pink color. It's not quite so bright. It's a little more muted. So this will be another pink V. After I do this section, we'll check how um, the lineup is going, like where our pattern is going to put our top section, whether it's going to pan out to be a green V or a pink V. If it's landing on a green V section, we'll adjust the sizes of the sections we're taking to make sure that we can end on a pink V on this side as well. Whenever the color doesn't get pulled down far enough to really fill that 
um, bottom portion of the triangle. I just take a little bit more color and feather it through there. Just so we don't end up with a little teensy blonde patch right in the middle. So let's check our sections again. If we do this as a green piece, then this will be a pink piece. And this would be a green piece. So let's adjust a little. I can either make this into two sections and do one green V, one pink V, but that's kind of big. So we're actually gonna break this down into four smaller sections. So this will be green, this will be pink, and then we have room to do another green and another pink. Definitely want to make sure it all matches up on the top. So we'll take a little thin, probably about half inch, maybe even a little smaller section right here to do another green V. Angela, stop moving, please. Okay, we're gonna put three more sections in here, a pink V, a green V, and then end on another pink V. my sections too and that gives it a little bit more of a diffused blend if you paint with the hair directly down where it normally falls it's going to be exactly where you put it and normally look a little harsher so if you elevate that hair it'll naturally diffuse and soften when it's down at zero degrees elevation Two more sections and it's a wrap. One more green and then one more pink. And we will let Angela process for about 25 minutes before we just rinse her really, really well with cool water. 
think I am going to give her a bit of a trim too. She's got that great mannequin hair that's shedding and splitting and it's just not, not a cute look. Because this section is not very wide, I'm actually not even going to take um, take my brush horizontally at all. I'm going to paint this all in vertically, just so I can really keep the control of where my paint is going. So hold it vertically and feather it right down into the point of that V. Right, last piece right here, which will be our pink V. So same thing as before, we're gonna elevate, paint our V just like we would do on any basic balayage. Check the underneath to make sure we have saturation all the way through. on the last section because this isn't a very wide piece instead of taking our brush horizontally I'm just gonna go ahead and start painting in vertically just so I can make sure I can keep that control Angela, are you drunk, man? Like, keep your head up, girl. Yeah, girl. All right, so let me show you guys what we are working with here. So here is our processing porn. We're definitely gonna have a lot of dimension in there. Should be a really seamless blend all throughout. So we are going to let Angela process for 25 minutes. Then we'll just be rinsing her with cool water. And then I'll blow it out and put the after on my story. So make sure you check back for that and uh, sometime tonight it'll be up. So check back for that and thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message and I'll see you next time. Bye.